So again, the title of today's webinar is The Impact of Retirement on Cognitive Decline, Findings from the CLSA, and it will be presented by Catherine Gosselin. Uh, Catherine is presently pursuing her PhD in neuropsychology at the Université Universi de Québec, uh, Trois-Rivières, under the supervision of Dr. An Anik uh, parent Lamarche and Dr. Benjamin Bowler. Uh, her research interests focus on the effects of social and environmental factors on cognitive decline in older adults. Catherine's thesis explores the role of cognitive reserve in the relationship between cognitive decline and retirement. She has received research grants from the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council and the uh, uh, Fonds de Research de Quebec, Society of Culture. I should have uh, polished my French before this webinar. Um, so now, without uh, further ado, I will let uh, Catherine uh, get started. So hi, everybody. Thank you very much for joining uh, the webinar today. So as mentioned earlier, my name is Catherine Gosselin. I'm currently pursuing my uh, PhD uh, degree in clinical neuropsychology at Université du Québec at Trois-Rivières. I work under the supervision of Dr. Uh, Annick Parent-Lamarche and Benjamin Boller. And uh, today, we will be talking about the first study we completed using data from the Canadian Longitudinal Study on Aging, where we explore the impact of retirement on cognitive decline among uh, Canadian adults. So uh, the Canadian population, as well as uh, in other Western countries, is experiencing a significant demographic change due to two uh, principal factors. So uh, there is the, the increase in life expectancy as well as, as well as the aging of the population. So as a result, we observe that the older age group constitute a larger proportion of the overall population. So according to Statistics Canada, nearly one in four Canadians is expected to reach the retirement age of 65 within the next two decades. So since aging remains the primary and most influential factor associated with cognitive decline, it is important to identify some social factor that may uh, influence the decline considering their impact in, on, on autonomy. So as we, wait, as we age, we undergo a cognitive change that are influenced by modification in brain structures. So it is important to know that these changes do not occur uniformly. So a study conducted by Arstorn and Jeremy revealed that our processing speed, uh, which refers to the rapidity which we can identify and process information, as well as our working memory, which allow us uh, to temporary storage information uh, for doing operations, uh, begin to, to decline in uh, our early 30s. So we also have the executive function, uh, which are involved in our ability to plan, to initiate action, to make a decision, and also self-regulating. Uh, they start to decline uh, in the middle age. But on the other part, we have other uh, cognitive ability that remain more stable over time. Uh, for example, our uh, vocabulary uh, seems to be uh, more preserved in the aging stage. And uh, we also uh, have our semantic knowledge that uh, seems to increase with uh, uh, the age. So it's, it's important to know that it's not all the cognitive abilities that seems to decline uh, when, we, uh, when we grow. So there is some function that uh, continue to, uh, to, to increase with the age. So for explaining the cognitive aging, there are some theories that have been um, proposed and that uh, are uh, based on the uh, cognitive function that are greater, that have a greater sensitivity to age-related brain, uh, brain structural change. 
So the first is the processing speed theory of cognitive aging. So um, as I mentioned, processing speed is defined by the rapidity at which information is being identified, analyzed, and acted upon in the environment. Uh, according to this theory, the decline in cognitive function uh, may primarily uh, attribute to a loss of processing speed, a general loss of uh, speed. So the slower processing speed uh, may lead to more difficulty to uh, complete tasks uh, efficiently. So there are two mechanisms that will be responsible for the relationship between processing speed and cognitive aging. So the first one is that cognitive operation or execute in a um, more larger, longer time. So it reduces our efficiency to complete the task. The second is that the decline in speed um, in processing the information uh, decrease the amount of information that is available for a higher level of processing. So as an example, when we have a decrease in processing speed, it may be, it may be more difficult to um, encode uh, the same amount of information. And uh, in the memory task, the recalling condition may be affected by uh, the processing speed. As a second theory, we have the pre prefrontal executive theory of cognitive aging that have been proposed by Wes. So uh, this theory is based on the relationship between uh, executive functions and uh, the cognitive decline uh, in aging individuals. So executive function refers to a set of cognitive skills and process, uh, such as planning, attention, inhibition, self-monitoring, self-regulation, and initiating actions. So these skills play a crucial role in goal-directed behavior in decision making as well as problem solving. So according to this theory, there are age related change that occur in the frontal cortex and the front frontal cortex is uh, linked to the um, abilities uh, in the, the executive functioning. So uh, the, the integrity in the frontal lobe uh, would be uh, the first to present change in the advancing of age and this will have impact on our abilities, uh, on executive abilities. And uh, the executive abilities are implied in um, many other cognitive uh, capacities. So this uh, decrease in executive function will uh, lead to a more general decrease in the cognitive abilities. Hi, Prince. Sorry to interrupt. I know yes. uh, you've been trying to speak a little bit louder, but if you can speak a little bit louder, I think it might just be your, the either talking into the microphone or just talking louder. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Yes, no problem. Do you hear me well when I talk, uh, when I speak with this uh, level? That's good. Either that or, or, or louder is fine. You might have to shout in your, in your okay. room. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's just the sound today. Sorry. <laughs> so sorry. So uh, the executive function uh, has also um, been challenged as a traditional uh, notion of one process uh, that, that is implied in executive function as a single process. So we have Miyaki that proposed uh, um, uh, that proposed that executive function uh, should have three uh, unitary components. Uh, these components are mental set shifting. So mental set shifting uh, refers to our ability uh, uh, of a switch, with switching between multiple tasks, multiple operations, as well as mental sets. Uh, Miyaki also identified the inhib inhibition component of executive functions. So the inhibition components refer to uh, the ability to deliberately um, Main, retain a more dominant, more automatic or prepotent response when it's necessary. And uh, the third component of the executive function is monitoring and updating. So the monitoring uh, updating refers to our ability to invest and disinvest in a task and uh, also uh, to clear the old information in our working memory in order for processing new information, new stimuli. So for Miyaki, executive function is composed uh, of three different components that are linking between uh, each other, but explain um, or remain unitary. 
So we also know that aging is the most important predictor of cognitive decline. Uh, one of these reasons is that uh, aging uh, enhances the probability of uh, presenting a neuroge neurodegenerative disease. But uh, when we have a neurodegenerative disease, uh, in the many times the diagnosis is, is made uh, later when we already observe um, sustainability um, structural change. Uh, we also have the opportunity to uh, explore social and environmental factors that may provide a particularly interesting avenue to identify certain profile of individual that are more at risk of uh, developing cognitive decline in order to take preven preventive action. So we know that major life events such as bereavement or diagnosis of a chronic illness can have a significant impact on the cognitive uh, aging. Uh, retirement represents a major life uh, event during uh, which uh, individual may experience uh, stress, as well as a numerous of lifestyle change that may also uh, uh, produce some, uh, some change in the cognitive functioning. So in this subject, we know that retirement uh, may be defined as a complete withdrawal of the working force. Uh, there are some studies that have been interested to uh, explore the link, the possible link between retirement and uh, the decline uh, in the processing speed. So uh, retirement may impair cognitive processing speed uh, as a study uh, that have been conducted in Netherlands show that uh, retirees individual, um, especially those who uh, present a lower level of education, uh, may uh, may present uh, impaired cognitive processing speed compared to their peer or who remain, um, remain actively working. So there are also some theories that uh, some studies that have been interested to explore the link between retirement and uh, the decline in the executive function. So a study uh, of white owl uh, that has have been conducted uh, among London-based civil servants uh, have um, have linked the decline in cognitive function uh, on tasks in, uh, of inductive reasoning to the retirement stat status. So retirees, uh, retirement retirees individual uh, show um, uh, a greater decline in the indic inductive reasonings. Uh, there's also a, a survey on health, aging, and retirement in Europe uh, that show a decline in the um, retired individual performance for tasks involving inhibition and updating abilities. So the previous studies that I, I have mentioned um, uh, that explored the, uh, the link between retirement and uh, the cognitive decline uh, have uh, our epidemiological studies. And a few of these studies provide evidence from a longitudinal design so here in Canada, we have the opportunity uh, to have access to the Canadian Longitudinal Study on Aging that provide us uh, the possibility to examine uh, the evolution of cognitive aging among a same cohort of participants. So the Canadian Longitudinal Study on Aging is a nationwide and long-term research project that aims to gather comprehensive data on various aspects of individual lives. So the study focused on a large sample, uh, nearly 50,000 Canadians that uh, were aged 45 to 85 years at the beginning of the study or the baseline. So data collection occurs at regular intervals, so uh, which participants being followed every three years for over a period of 20 years. So the CLSA consists of two main cohorts. We have uh, the comprehensive cohort and the tracking cohort. So the tracking cohort consisting of uh, er, approximately 20,000 participants that were randomly selected from all 10 provinces in Canada. They have completed a series of cognitive tests uh, as part uh, of a telephone interview. And on the other end, we have the uh, comprehensive cohort, uh, which include 30,000 participants. Uh, these participants have been randomly selected uh, from specific geographic areas 
uh, within 25 to 50 kilometers of 11 data collection sites uh, across seven provinces. So uh, the comprehensive co-op uh, have undergone community test batteries that were uh, included in the in-home interview, as well as the neuropsychological test batteries uh, that have been assessed at one of the data collection sites. So our study, uh, uh, we aim to uh, examine how uh, our retirement may affect age-related age decline in the executive function and processing speed among participants in the Canadian Longitudinal Study on Aging. So we have formulated the following uh, hypothesis. So the first hypothesis uh, is in accordance with the processing speed theory of aging where uh, we expect that retirees will exhibit greater decline on measures of mental flexibility to individuals who are still actively working. For our second hypothesis, we, um, we advance that retirees will experience greater decline in uh, the processing speed than individuals who remain active in the workplace. This one is, uh, sorry, this one is, on, uh, is related to the processing speed theory and also link it to the um, prefrontal cortex uh, executive theory. We, um, we advance that retirees will experience greater decline in inhibition than individuals who remain active in the workplace. So in the CLSF part, uh, study, participants with cognitive impairment were not uh, included in the baseline assessment. So for the constitution of our simple, we, um, we did a, a list of sorting criteria. So we used the data from the comprehensive cohort of uh, nearly 30,000 uh, participants. So on the first step, we exclude the, uh, the participants that uh, some uh, sociodemographic data were missing, as well as uh, the data at the second follow-up. So um, participant that does not uh, continue the, the following after the baseline phase. After uh, we uh, use certain uh, inclusion criteria, so we select participants that were all actively working at the baseline. And after this participant at the follow-up uh, have to be uh, retired, retired or also actively working. We also have uh, some exclusion criteria. So uh, for being sure to, um, to measure the impact of retirement, we select participants with um, health uh, with a good health condition in, in neurolo neurological. So we exclude participants that may um, that may have a memory problem causing by a head injury, uh, also cerebrovascular accident, uh, transient ischemic attack, also as Parkinson disease or epilepsy. So uh, after we have uh, a sample of uh, 1,029 uh, sample of retiree and uh, 8,237 uh, non-retirees. We, we after we exclude participants uh, that uh, as, as report not being currently working at the second measurement time for the sample of workers, because some participants uh, seem to have responded that they were not retired, but they were not actively working. So we control this variable too. And for the sample of retirees, we select the uh, participants that were retired for almost uh, at least one year. Um, we select uh, one year because previous studies have um, demonstrated that the impact of retirement on, uh, on the cognitive decline uh, should appear uh, at one year or after. And after we have uh, 758 retirees, one year's retirees and uh, 7,895 workers, we use the propensity score matching method for pairing each uh, participant uh, who were retired with a participant uh, that were actually working um, and based on uh, some confounding variable that have been uh, uh, that have been uh, highlighted in the literature. So um, 
for our materials, we use uh, the, uh, the information of uh, questionnaires. So we have the social democratic characteristic that were um, used for the matching method. So uh, the, the information were collected from CLSA participants during the in-home interview. Uh, the question contained uh, information about the conversational speaking variable in English, where the participant was required to answer a question um, asking uh, if they, they speak English at home or French. We also have access to uh, the age uh, of the participants, so the age at the baseline and the follow-up one. We also use uh, the sex variable of participants as well as their le level of education, so the level of scalarity that has, has been attained. For the retirement status, we use uh, two uh, items in the questionnaires. Our first item, item was the subjective retirement status where a participant was required to answer a question asking uh, whether they consider themselves as retired, partially retired, or employed. And we also use the second, um, second item when we want to know if the workers were actually working um, at, the, uh, at the baseline or at the follow-up phases. So, there were multiple tests that were conducted um, during uh, the in-home interview as well as the data collection site. Uh, these tests measure um, executive function, processing speed, but also episodic memory and other function. So um, related to our hypothesis, we select uh, only a uh, few of the tests that uh, may be a measure of uh, the, um, the specific function that we want to assess. So uh, for measure the cognitive flexibility, we use the mental alternation test or the MAT. So the MAT test consists of uh, two parts. So the first part, the first part, the participants uh, have to count the, uh, from one to 26 and also have to recite uh, the alphabet. So in the uh, second part, uh, which involves uh, the mental flexibility, the participants have to alternate uh, between uh, alphabet letters and number. So for example, the participant has to say uh, uh, one, A, two, B, three, C, etc. So scores are ranged between uh, zero to 51 and are based on the number of correct alternation minus, minus error during a 30 second period. So for a measure of processing speed, as well as inhibition, we use the Stroop test. So the Stroop test also uh, include a French uh, language version for the French speaker participants. The test include three different parts. So the first part consists of uh, naming the color of the printed dots. So it's a, a, a part that is more uh, relied to uh, our uh, rapidity or speed to, uh, of denomination. For the second part, it consists to reading non-color words that are written in different uh, colors. So for this task, uh, it's more, cons uh, it's more a, a task of reading, the rapidity of reading. And for the, the third part, so the interference ones, this, uh, this task also um, solicited uh, the, our uh, inhibition to um, retain an automatic uh, reading response in order to name uh, the color ink of the work. So for this task, uh, higher score uh, represents uh, power performance because a higher score uh, is the response time. So if you take more time to respond to the card, it's, uh, it represents a power performance for this task. We also use the choice reaction time, that is a computer-based measure of uh, psychomotor speed. So for this task, the participant is required to uh, respond to one stimulus, but not to respond to uh, the other. So it's um, a task that also uh, that uh, will uh, assess the performance. And um, for this task, you have uh, multiple stimuli and the possibility of answers. So the measure use or the latency score or the of the correct answer for the presentation. So for this task, uh, uh, IR score is the IR response score is also a synonym of uh, uh, represents uh, a fewer performance. 
So for the procedure, uh, during uh, the CL second pre study, participants undergo evaluation uh, of episodic memory processing speed as well as executive functions. Uh, these evaluations are conducted by a trained CLSS staff member uh, following standardized operating procedures. So comprehensive participants complete a battery of cognitive tests during an in-home interview, which lasts approximately 27 minutes. This battery include the, the mental alternation test that we use in our study. Uh, in addition, of the, at the um, in-home interview, participants also visit data collection side uh, when they complete additional neuropsychological tests, uh, including the Stroop test, as well as the choice reaction time. So for the analysis, we, um, we want to ensure uh, comparable samples of workers and retirees. So we employed the nearest neighbor matching method with a caliper of 0 0.02. Uh, we use the matched package for air. And uh, the matching method has been widely used in the cohort studies and has shown to improve the balance in potential confounding variables. So given that retirees and workers may differ in sociodemographic characteristics, uh, the nearest neighbor matching method helped minimize the potential influence of factors that could affect retirement probabilities as well as the cognitive performance. So to estimate the propensity score, uh, we, we use the logistic regression what, that was based on the calculate uh, probability of retirement occurrence uh, based on the several variables. Uh, the variables uh, considered in the predicting equation were the conversational language, the age at the baseline, the sex, and the uh, level of education. So we choose this, uh, these variables because uh, previously a uh, study have shown some uh, difference in the cognitive performance that was based on the uh, this social demographic variables. So, so at the end, we have uh, each retiree participant that uh, has been matched with the uh, retire uh, with the uh, worker participants, and uh, the same as uh, the, the both participants uh, share similar characteristic uh, on this variable that we select. So after we we did the mixed design analysis of variance, so um, we decide to um, run separately the English and French speakers data uh, because uh, there are uh, language based differences that has been uh, on raw score for uh, the condition at many measures. So we decide to uh, to to did the the uh, analysis separately. So our model was a two-factor mix analysis, repeat measures, uh, and we have the time as uh, our within group factor. So we have uh, to measure the baseline and uh, the first follow-up three years after. We have also our between group factors. So we compare the, the group of retirees with uh, the group of uh, workers. We also use the Bonferroni correction for uh, the multiple comparison, uh, comparison at the post-hoc. But we didn't use Bonferroni um, in uh, the multiple analysis on the, the different component of, ex of uh, cognitive function because our hypotheses were a priori uh, determined. So the table one shows the results of uh, the characteristic between workers and retirees uh, after they were matched with the nearest neighbor matching method. So what we can see in uh, this uh, in this table is that uh, we have a proportion that are similar for the language and uh, also the other characteristics. So uh, between the workers and the retirees, we have approximately 66, 67 uh, English speaking uh, person. We have 10% uh, of French speaking uh, person and we have uh, 25% uh, of uh, people that were bilingual. For the age, we have uh, approximately 59 that for the so 59 uh, of mean with a standard deviation of five. We also have uh, the similar amount of uh, men and uh, women in each group. So 45 up for the proportion and uh, 55, 54 for the, uh, the woman. 
uh, level of education, we also have the similar proportion uh, at each year. It's uh, it's interesting to uh, to maybe uh, see that our uh, nearest neighbor method um, may have created uh, um, a group of participants with a higher level of education when we compare to uh, what what will be uh, found in the in in the democratic uh, population. So the result I present here is the result uh, we observe for the English speaking sample uh, of the performance trajectory at the color naming card. So the first card of the stew. So what we can see is that, that as the baseline that is represented by the T0, we can see there is no uh, big difference and no significant difference between the retirees and workers. So, we can see uh, the impact of uh, cognitive um, of uh, cognitive aging on processing speeds as uh, our retirees and workers uh, seems to take more time to complete the task. We also have the interaction effect where we can see that uh, the increased time is uh, significantly uh, higher for the retirees compared to the workers. For this figure, we can see uh, the result of the performance trajectory of English speaking sample at uh, the third card, so the interference card of the true. It is important to, um, to mention that the interference card true um, is composed by uh, processing speed as well as the inhibition. If we want to calculate the inhibition part uh, unitary, we have to uh, do a, a ratio. And uh, for this measure, we didn't find any significant result. So this result uh, may, be as, may be as part influenced by the processing speed as well as the inhibition component. So, in the same way we, we found the result for the card one, we can see that we didn't find any uh, significant difference between the retirees and the workers at the baseline. Uh, retirees and workers seems to take more time at the follow-up. Uh, and uh, we can see an, an impact, uh, uh, an interaction effect where retirees cease to significantly um, take a more pronounced uh, response time than the workers at the follow-up. So there is, uh, this is uh, the performance trajectory uh, for the English speaking sample at the mental alternation test, which uh, was a measure of the mental flexibility. So what we can see is that at the baseline, uh, we have a similar result uh, for the retirees and the workers. When we go at the measurement time, here we see only a decline uh, in the retiree group compared to uh, the worker group. So uh, we also uh, did the, uh, the analysis for the choice reaction time, but we, we do not uh, obtain any significant uh, effect between the retirement and the, 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 the time, uh, as well for the English speaking group and the French speaking group. We also know that we didn't find any interaction effect uh, between the retirement status and the time uh, for the mental alternation task, as well as the stroke tax in the French speaking group. So our study was as the aim to investigate the impact of retirement on cognitive decline on different areas of uh, cognitive, including uh, processing speed, mental flexibility, and inhibition among the uh, older uh, adults from the CLSA sample. Uh, we expect that retired will experience uh, more decline than workers on flexibility, mental flexibility, inhibition, and processing speed, according to the aging theories. Uh, what we found is that uh, retirement may uh, have impact the, the uh, performance for the mental alternation task, as well as the stroke task, which are uh, each measure of processing speed or mental flexibility. We uh, didn't, however, find a result for the performance at the choice reaction time, which uh, was also a measure uh, used for assess the processing speed. And um, we didn't obtain uh, any significant result uh, of the impact of retirement on cognitive decline on uh, the um, measure of inhibitions. 
thoroughly inefficient. So in accordance to uh, the result that we that we obtained in the processing speed, uh, we see a small negative effect on processing speed for both uh, the first and the third card. However, the eff effect of retirement on cognitive decline uh, was not found uh, on the only measure of inhibition. So uh, these results seems to agree with the previous results that have been um, illustrated, highlighted by uh, the CRIP et al. Uh, the study find that retirement was associated with a decline in processing speed. So, however, we didn't find the same result for the choice reaction time. And uh, we, we may think that uh, the um, choice reaction time, uh, the average measure may not be uh, as um, sense sensitive that the um, intravariability uh, measure of the task that uh, will have been with the standard deviation. So maybe for measuring uh, the, um, the impact of aging uh, on the performance of the task, it will be more appropriate to, um, to be interested of uh, the intravariability in the response time uh, instead of the average, average reaction time. So uh, for our hypothesis in mental flexibility, we also see a, a small effect on cognitive uh, decline on mental flexibility performance uh, for the English speaking group only. So these findings were consistent with the previous uh, study of Robert et al, which find a negative association between retirement and mental flexibility. Uh, they are also in line with uh, the decline in mental flexibility that, that has been found in retired participants uh, in the study of Ryan when uh, they, um, they uh, assess the evolution of uh, cognitive performance in a three-phase longitudinal study. So it is important to acknowledge that uh, our studies have some strengths but also have some limitations. So for the strengths, uh, we uh, have the, the opportunity to uh, assess, uh, to, to analyze the uh, performance uh, with the longitudinal design. So it gives us the, per the, the possibility to assess the evolution of the cognitive performance instead of only one measures at one time. Uh, the CLSC uh, data uh, also allow us to uh, measure cognitive function with validated measures on multiple cognitive domains. And uh, our propensity score matching method may also um, help us to, uh, to have a more uh, um, comparable group um, in order to a sociodemocratic characteristic that may also have an impact of uh, the cognitive performance. We also have uh, some, um, some limitation. So uh, for the first limitation, we want to uh, measure the mental flexibility, the reactive part of uh, the, the mental flexibility. And we only use uh, one measure, uh, the mental alternation test. We also uh, didn't uh, find many results in the English speaking, speaking group in our francophones group. And uh, one of the main reasons is uh, that we have a, a smaller, smaller, um, smaller sample of the uh, of the English speaker group. So maybe maybe this is one of the reasons why we didn't find the the result in this group. So uh, in conclusion, retirement uh, may affect our results. Suggest that retirement may affect cognitive performance in the measure of executive functioning as well as processing speed. But uh, we also highlight the uh, the lack of significant result in French speaking group that may be uh, interpreted in terms of sample size. So maybe the use of a matching method propensity score um, give us uh, less. Uh, less, uh, less, uh, less, 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 uh, but fewer participants for the, the French uh, speaker group. And uh, also uh, we, um, we observed that many of the French speaking group in our uh, sample were bilingual. So they were uh, not only unitary francophone. So maybe uh, we know that bilingual may uh, be um, an advantage at the 
measures, uh, performances measure at mental alternation uh, task. So maybe it's another uh, possible explanation for the lack of results that we, we, we didn't find. So for our future research, uh, we will investigate the work, uh, the role of the uh, work history and uh, more precisely the work of the, the role of uh, occupational complexity in the effect of retirement on the cognitive abilities. So we obtained the CLSA approval for our second study that will be entitled uh, the role of uh, reserve of cognitive reserve in uh, the association between uh, retirement and cognitive decline. So uh, over the next year, but over the, the next year, we will be uh, working on conducting the second study for my thesis project. So we will focus on the role of occupational complexity in uh, the relationship between retirement and cognitive decline. So uh, this study will be conducted using data from the three years follow-up. So we will have the baseline, the first follow-up, and also the data from the second follow-up. So in, uh, in order to have a more, um, more simple size, we will use um, uh, uh, regressions, multiple variated migration, uh, and uh, use the data from uh, 8,000 653 CLSA participants. For uh, doing this study, we uh, need to um, code uh, textual data of uh, the uh, occupational uh, type of profession that each participant have, uh, have mentioned. So it takes a little more time for uh, this task to be complete. So, I want to thank you, all the participants of the CLSA study, as well as uh, all uh, the research staff that are affiliated with the CLSA. I also want to thank you, uh, my thesis supervisor, so Dr. Uh, uh, Annick Paran-Lamarche and Benjamin Baller. And I also want to thank you, CRSH and Fonds de Recherche Société et Culture for the funding uh, of our studies. So thank you very much for your attention. and. Uh, your participation at this webinar, I will be pleased to answer uh, your questions. Okay. Well, thank you very much for a very informative webinar. We have lots of questions. Um, yes. So just a reminder for our attendees, if you have a, a question, please put it in the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. Um, and I will go through the questions with uh, Catherine now. Um, so the first question, um, going back to earlier in your presentation, uh, why did you feel uh, it was essential to use neighborhoods and not areas of continued study or even volunteerism? To use, uh, sorry, neighborhoods and not areas of continued study? Yes, yeah, so why you use that as your variable of interest and not um, areas of continued study or volunteerism? That's the first question. Okay, so uh, when you, just just for being sure, when we talk about the neighborhood, is it uh, for the matching method that we use, the nearest neighbor matching method? Um, I'm not sure. So maybe if it's not clear, um, they can ask a, a follow-up question or give some follow-up details. And then maybe we'll go on to the next question. Okay. Um, which is during the, the MAT test, what is the rate count or generation? The, the rate count or generation is, um, so it, the, the score is between zero to 51. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and it's uh, during a period of 30 seconds. So it's all the, um, the score is calculated between all alternation that has been done minus the, um, the uh, sorry, the, uh, the uh, the errors for a period of 30 seconds. Okay. Um, oh, lots of questions happening. Uh, did you look at percentage of participants who retired early at, for example, age 65 or later? Yeah, uh, this, uh, yes, we, we, um, we see in our, uh, we didn't uh, made analysis uh, at um, 
at each of the group of age and uh, as participants that were retired before 65. But uh, it's an interesting question. We will uh, we will also uh, make the, our regression for the second study where we will uh, uh, do analysis uh, separately uh, as age group. So uh, age between 60, uh, before 65 and age after 65. What in, in our group, when we what we can see is that uh, the average of age was uh, 59 uh, with a standard deviation of five. So um, it informs us that it's a uh, young retirees. It's not so it's many retirees were before the age of 65. Um, and our next question is, are these are these same measures of cognitive functions available in the tracking cohort? Um, and if yes, you may have a larger sample size and may effectively detect relationships. Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, we we were not sure if we use all the data from the tracking cohort and the comprehensive cohort. Uh, our choice has been made on the comprehensive cohort for um, for two main reasons. So the first reason is that there is some um, assessment that were not uh, available in the tracking cohort. So all the assessment that have been uh, uh, completed at the data collection site, uh, such as uh, the Stroop test or the choice reaction time, were not available in the tracking core. So it uh, allow us to do a less uh, less uh, analyze of uh, some of the executive component as well as processing speed, and also um, the. Uh, Tracking cord that uh, were assessed uh, in during in phone interview, so uh, we chose to uh, to to uh, concentrate our study in comprehensive cohort uh, because there are some difference between the both cohort uh, in the in the procedure uh, of assessing the test. Okay. Uh, next question is: What might be the role of volunteering on cognitive decline? So this is also a very good question. Uh, we, uh, I have one friend who um, is uh, very interested in the role of uh, interaction, uh, social interaction between uh, the retirement. So um, retirement is one of the components that may influence uh, the cognitive uh, decline, but uh, there are many studies that uh, seems to highlight uh, the um, positive impact of uh, volunteering and uh, being socially active in the during uh, after the retirement, as well as doing uh, uh, stimulating and intellectual activities. And what about the um, the impact of bilingualism on cognition? I think you talked about that a little a little bit, but did you actually look at the impact? And um, if so, what was found? So it was more a hypothesis. Though, so what we uh, we can see is that um, in our French uh, French sample, we find that many of the French speaker were bilingual, but. Um, if we uh, refer to the literature or research, previous research, uh, we know that um, uh, learning a second language may be, um, maybe have a positive impact on our uh, cognitive flexibility. So we have to think in other language. It may be um, pretty good for, uh, for the brain and for our cognitive uh, performance. And uh, we know that the, at the mental alternation test, it's also a task that will uh, that uh, solicited uh, switching between response. So it it was it was more an hypothesis that maybe we didn't find uh, these um, the the same result uh, also uh, because of this component. Um, okay. So next question: What was used to assess executive functioning? So you used. CRT and Stroop to, to uh, assess processing speed, but what was used for executive functioning? So uh, we use for uh, assess executive functioning, we use the mental alternation test for the flexibility component. And for the inhibition component, uh, we use a, a ratio uh, between the, the, the third card of the Stroop and the first card of the Stroop. We also did the ratio because be, between the third card and the second card. Uh, it allow us to um, to um, uh, isolate the inhibition part uh, that is responsible for the response time uh, to the um, 
the to our our rapidity of uh, naming uh, denomination of color or our rapidity to um, to reading. So that's how we assess the inhibition part and the mental flexibility uh, for the mental uh, alternation test. Great, thank you. Um, okay, so next question. How would you address the possibility of reverse causality? So um, that's a very good question. And uh, it's, we try to, um, we try to uh, control certain variables such as uh, the um, the uh, the research uh, so we uh, we select uh, some neurological uh, disease that participants may have report so this may, may be one of the of the the thing we we try to control so that people uh, didn't take their retirement uh, for uh, uh, some of these disease but it remains a longitudinal study, so uh, it's difficult to, we don't have control uh, uh, at any of the variables. So we try in this way, but it's not, uh, it's not uh, perfect. Okay, and we have uh, just a clarification from Adeline from earlier. So she wanted to know, what is your criteria of neighborhood? So how, how did you define neighborhood? So uh, uh, do I find neighborhood for the, but I think it's for the matching method if I don't. Uh... Um, I believe so. Okay, so for the matching method, yeah. uh, our neighborhood uh, criteria were defined by, by um, previous studies that have, um, that have highlighted some uh, of sociodemographic characteristics that maybe have an impact on cognitive decline. Uh, and a cognitive performance. So it's all, um, and we also refer to uh, the study of Tuoko, uh, where they examine a difference uh, between uh, cognitive performance on some of the social sociodemographic. So we use uh, previous literature to uh, to uh, select all the, uh, the these neighborhood uh, criteria. Right. We have a few more, so I'm gonna try to get through them quickly for you. Um, Next one, uh, were there people that couldn't be matched and will this get even harder with what even harder with occupations introduced? Yes. Uh, that's a very good question. That's why we uh, changed our um, type of analysis. So we did ANOVA and uh, for the, the second study, we want to exclude a less, lesser, uh, at least a fewer uh, participants possible, so we will use um, uh, regressions where we will control, but in a, another way. So we, we, we will not have to exclude the participants. The, the confounding variable, uh, the sociodemographic confounding variable will be controlled, but the participants will also be included. So we, we will uh, change our design because yes, if we also add the uh, occupational role, it will, it will, we will have, um, fewer uh, sample if we continue with this type of analysis that we done. Okay. Um, and I just wanted to also know if you're starting, as participants start to leave, if you could um, please uh, complete your exit questionnaire on the on the way out um, and we'll, we'll stay on probably for a couple extra minutes to uh, finish up these questions. Um, okay, so next question, what informed your choice of cognitive tests to choose from? Um, I understand that the CLSA has other tests available. Well, that's a very good question for the um, fluency test. With uh, the um, so our interest was to uh, observe the the in the cognitive flexibility. You have two components. You have uh, the uh, reactive flexibility, uh, which uh, is more uh, linked to uh, our ability uh, of working memory and our ability to switch between tasks. We also have uh, flexibility that is uh, more um, linked to the spontaneous uh, cognitive ability. So our ability to generate spontaneously new strategy as in the um, animal fluency task. This task uh, is also uh, more linked to uh, the lexical knowledge so that's why we didn't uh, we we did the, the uh, we chose the mental alternation test for assess uh, the the mental flexibility but the reactive part that we want to assess. 
Um, and the next question is about excluding participants who had a primary language of English or French. And I can just quickly say that that was one of our inclusion criteria um, of the CLSA. So participants needed to be English or French speaking. And that's outlined in our protocol. So I got you off the hook for that one. Yes, yes. Thank you. Um, okay, but the next question for you is seniors will need to be financially aware as they will become increasingly older. Finance is, is a complex function. Can we test this critical function since it will be increasingly important in years after retirement? Good question. I would just take the time to read. So for the financial part, uh, I'm I'm not pretty sure. I, I don't want to to say uh, something that is not true. I'm not pretty sure of uh, all the um, all the uh, finance information that are responsive that are this available for testing this part. Uh, for uh, the occupational part that um, we uh, presently are recording is uh, the textual information uh, of the uh, occupational type that is. Uh, that is doing so. The the person uh, is ex a, a response to the question, "What uh, what are you actually working?" And uh, the the participant will uh, will answer, uh, "I'm a teacher," with the domain of. It. So this is the the data that I I am aware that are available, but I'm not sure with the financial uh, data. And our very last question, which I know we're over time. Um, was non-French or English bilingual bilingualism seen, or the or an effect of born in Canada versus immigrants to Canada? So uh, it's a very interesting question. In uh, our present study, I did not uh, we did not uh, uh, explore this way, but it will be uh, very interesting for the second study. I think. To uh, thank you. Well, thank you again. I'm sorry for rushing those last few questions, but I did want to get them get them in. Um, thank you to our our presenter today. We really appreciate you coming on. Lots of good, lots of lots of questions. The most I've seen in quite a while. Um, <laughs> I'd like to remind everyone that the next deadline for data access is July 12th, 2023, and you can visit our CLSA website under data access to review what data is available as well as uh, how to apply for the data. I'd also like to remind everyone to complete their questionnaire upon exiting today. Uh, the next CLSA webinar will be entitled Influenza and Pneumococcal Vaccination Uptake Among Canadian Adults. It will be presented June 7th by Dr. Nicole Basta and Dr. Georgia um, Sulis and PhD student Katie uh, Gravagna. Um, and you can find registration details for that on our website. Um, and finally, the CLSA promotes the webinar series using hashtag CLSA webinar, and uh, we would invite you to follow us on Twitter um, using the hashtag at, at CLSA underscore ELCB. So enjoy the rest of the day, everyone, and thank you again.